today's video, we're doing the Surf and Turf Championship in the inner lake of Manitoba. Two biggest walleye, two biggest grouse, winner takes home a trophy I've not purchased yet. But this is gonna be a yearly thing, we're going by weight. This is taking an idea from my buddy Jamie Bruce, he does a little, little derby back home, and uh, I was like, that's fun. So we're, we're taking that idea and we're doing it in Manitoba's inner lake. Grouse season's open till January 1st, so I'm excited to extend my hunting season a little bit longer, and we're on the ice on Lake Manitoba, so sunrise bite. Sunrise, sunset, you know the drill. Hungry, shallow, Walleyes. This lake has so much ice so early. Uh, it freezes a lot faster than like Winnipeg. And you would think it would freeze slower being a big lake. It, it really doesn't because it's so shallow. Um, and there's probably 12 inches of ice out here already. Yeah, excited to be back out with my buddy Keevan. There's so much ice. Lots of ice. <laughs> we got the Summit Shuttle. I love this thing. If three feet of water, we're fishing, so I'm not sure really how much live soap's gonna help. Adding the bells. Even when it's dead calm out here, it's so easy to miss your rod bouncing. All right, rod number one, drench with a meathead, bells, minnow. We are gonna be out here for two days. So we got a sunrise and a sunset, and a sunrise and a sunset. So you're gonna see some fish being iced. We are definitely gonna bring some fish home with us. I think I'm gonna win, we just got good vibes. Oh my gosh. Oh, Keevan. Bring it home. Wow, that did not take long. On the board, Mr. Keevan Erickson. About two minutes of the dead stick being down. <laughs> we got a Lake Manitoba walleye. We are gonna keep this guy locked at 2.08. We're locking it. First entry in the 2023 Interlake Classic. And we got a two pounder. What do you think a big Sharpie weighs? I would say like maybe like close to three pounds. Yeah, probably a little bigger. Yeah, good thing you put the live minnows so far away. Hey. <laughs> this is strategy, isn't it? Give myself a chance. Again, look at this guy. Oh man, we're off to a bad start for me. Oh, I got bells! The minnow's just freaking out. I don't know if the fish actually. Another one. I think a little bit bigger than the last one. Lock two, three, four. Fish number two. All right. Fish. So angry every single one all the time. Angry, just like me right now for being in second place. <laughs> awesome. Great start. I need to get serious. This is this is a bad start. What I love about Lake Manitoba is you don't deal with too many fish just coming, staring and looking like, I don't know what it is in particular. They kind of just come in and kill it, which is what you want with any time you're fishing. I think a lot of people, if they're coming up to Lake Winnipeg and let's say they've had some slower fish and they just want to, you know, put some more fish on the ice, fishing with someone that just wants some action or some kids or something, you know, add a day, add a day to Lake Manitoba. You're doing a couple days on Lake Winnipeg, three, four days on Lake Winnipeg, add a day to Lake Manitoba. Oh, there's a fish coming in. Come on. I saw the fish. Oh, I got him. Ooh, that was sweet. Just saw him kind of on the side of the cone angle. Ooh, it's decent. Oh, that's a skinny one compared to yours. That's what I like to hear. This is a good, good start to the day. Look at that. I'm loving this tiny scissor kick. That's a cool little. Yeah, it's just, they don't have any problem inhaling it. Oh. 1A2. It's like a walleye, but smaller. <laughs> got a little water on the lens, but. Have you lost a rod down the hole before, Kevin? Uh, I've always gotten it back. Yeah, there was a time in my younger days I was fishing on uh, a chubby darter and on a rod dead stick, so not something you'd expect a fish to hit. Yeah. And, oh, 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 that's a fish, that's a fish. Oh no! Oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we were just talking about it. Oh my, it almost happened. <laughs> <laughs> you ever lost a rod, Kevin? <laughs> That's cute too. Yeah, exactly. 190. This is a great start to our little Inner Lake Cup. The Inner Lake Classic. Yeah, yours are just all significantly bigger. That clip of the rod almost going in's hilarious. Just as I'm talking about it, that's why you, on. Oh wow, just as soon as you dropped. That looks a little <laughs> bit better. Another like, just cookie cutter fish. I think we're almost done keeping fish. Oh boy, we got an upgrade. 196. Oh. 
Good morning. So I'm just tail hooking, tail hooking them. This is the smallest size meathead jig. I've gone without the stinger. If you guys remember the video from earlier this season, which was filmed last year, Keeva and I are getting underwater strikes and stuff. It felt like sometimes the stinger actually hampered us in this shallow water. Maybe it's different with thin ice, I don't know. But stinger sometimes seems like it can be something that catches on the ice. But yeah, we're fishing in, well, there's three and a half, eh, four feet of water under the ice. But yeah, same deal. Touching bottom and then lifting the rod onto the bucket. I like to put the butt kind of near the end. So then if that fish drags, there is a chance that it falls back into itself. Obviously that one where the rod, the reel hooked there, which is good too. But I mean, there's a million rod holders on the market, but this is just, everyone's got a bucket along, right? So I keep all my gear in this. I'm using the, uh, the slap shot today. Using the slap shot, the 32 medium. Good for the tiny little scissor kick. That's what I'm using. Nice bright color in this murky water with a, just a piece of minnow tail. You really don't need electronics out here. The fish just kind of come in and eat it, but it is cool to watch. Oh, I Look just went guy. to check it and it got hit. Oh my gosh, it's just up the hole. <laughs> Beautiful. Another right. just real angry, like a walleye. Ice Number reason. six. Number six. Well, that's a fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, it's an upgrade. It's an upgrade. Nice. I don't know if this will be a two pounder. Cool. Another upgrade. 1.96 and 1.97. You're 2.08 and 2.34. Close in the grand scheme of things. Well, if you don't shoot a grouse. Yeah. Ooh, there's a nice mark. Oh, oh! Woo -hoo -hoo! Upgrade? Nope. Now, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is an upgrade. Yeah? Nope. Nope. <laughs> wow. We're just fishing a couple hundred yards offshore. You can pretty much, from what I've seen, anywhere you can walk out on Lake Manitoba, you can catch fish. I know there's better spots, but you're fishing this big mud bowl. Fish are cruising around. Sunrise and sunset seems to be pretty key, but there's times where you can catch fish all day. And sometimes you get into pods of perch, sometimes walleye. There's some giant burbot here as well, but early and late in the season seems like you can get on a pretty good shallow bite. When I've been here mid-season with Keevan, then I've had to go a little deeper, get out into like 12 to 15 feet, but. I feel like just uh, given our shorter day of the year, maybe we just go Oh, eh? I think so. All right, that concludes the first session of the Inner Lake Classic. We'll give you the current standings. Keevan's two biggest walleye, 2.08 pounds and 2.34 pounds. My two biggest walleyes, 1.96 and 1.97, putting me in second place. We're gonna have two grouse. Is this second or last place? Last. First loser, second place. Anyways, amazing morning on Lake Manitoba. If you have not ice fished Lake Manitoba, you're missing out because it is, it gets fast and furious sunrise, sunset. But this is around the shortest day of the year. So we're gonna pack up and uh, go walk some pastures for some grouse. What are we doing now, Kevin? We're going to do the turf part of a surf and turf. Prairie chicken, the prairie chicken bowl. Here we go. What, uh, so what, what's the deal? How, how does one, uh... I was one hunt these birds. Generally speaking, they relate to the points. So we've got all kinds of bluffs here and we're just gonna walk the edges and uh, work up to the points and, and see if we flush them and get a shot. Just two, like that. Two heaviest Sharpies. Yeah, yeah, so far I'm in second place, but uh, we'll be rocking some head cams, keeping light and agile. There is some breeze picking up, so this fog should lift, but I love Sharpie hunting. It is such a challenge of your shooting skills and just being ready to go. Obviously lots of private par farmland that you can get permission on to hunt around Manitoba. There are some pastures that I've hunted in the past you can like sign into and, and there's large parcels of, of land that you can hunt as well. But uh, I don't really feel like the sharp tail get a lot of pressure in, uh, in Manitoba. You go down to the States, there's a lot of pheasant hunting and stuff, but up here there's tons of sharpies and from what i've heard from keevan they've done pretty good the last couple years so i'm excited to give it a crack and uh this is where i'm going to take the lead back that's my plan at least oh we doing this we're doing it we really really doing it i feel like the walleyes was the easy part yeah it was so do you want left or right seems like you want left yeah probably left <laughs> here we go the thing about the sharpie hunting is i'm not passing on a sharpie it's not like i'm uh it's not like I'm gonna wait for a fat one. So the thing that I've noticed about Sharpies is you have to be so fast. Ruffies, spruce grouse, they're a little dumber. They sit around, sharp tail just are fast. Any bites? No nibbles. All right, I'm gonna hit this edge. It is crazy, there's just no snow. That's kind of why I wanted to do this. Season's open late, January 1st it closes and snow, snow, so. What I always love about Sharpie hunting is such good exercise too, you know? 
Nothing wrong with ice fishing, but you don't really get your steps in the same way. Couple bluffs here, then we'll work this line back towards the truck. Okay. Oh no. Watch him, watch him, watch him. Gone. Should we walk in there or no? No, it's a big bush. I thought you dropped him that first shot. You never know how many chances you're gonna get. It happens so fast. That would have put me ahead in the competition. All right, well, that was a lot of fun. Got some good steps in, hit my 10,000 steps for today. We saw a lot. That's probably close to the most I've seen for like three hours. So tomorrow we're gonna hit it harder. One that I think I got a piece of, but these other ones are just a little too far away. When they're in the middle of the field, they, they see ya and they have really good eyesight, especially when you're dealing with a bigger covey, it feels like one sees you and they all flush. So we're gonna try to get permission on that one field that we couldn't, where we saw a bunch. And uh, we're gonna try to sneak in an evening bite on Lake Manitoba. Well, if we can't shoot any grouse, this might turn into just a two walleye derby, but we're back out for prime time. All right, see if I can upgrade a couple. We don't need to keep any more fish. We got a good meat haul. Looks like there's some fish heading over to my dead stick. Keevan, I think I'm gonna get bit on the dead stick. Just predicting he's gonna bite. Ooh, we're on. Nice. I don't think that's gonna be an upgrade. Not a two pounder. Close, close. But rather than wasting time weighing him, gotta get back in the game. There was another fish down there. Another one. Oh, no. All right, I'm just gonna set that there. Oh, here we go, here we go. It's a nice mark. Come on, come on, he's just under. Oh, he missed it. He's vertical, oh! That's decent. It is so dark. Oh, 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 he missed it. Come on, come back, come back. He's staring at it. Got him. Nice. It ain't over. We came back for more. No upgrades though. Keevan might be keeping the lead. It might come down to one, one unlucky grouse tomorrow. So if you guys are looking to come fish or hunt this area there, I mean, there's a lot of places. If you can see in Portage La Prairie, if you want to fish the south end, if you want to fish the east end, there's accommodations in Lundar, uh, just south. There's the MTT, which we've showcased in some videos before. They got great accommodations right near some fishing access points. You go farther north, I mean, there's steep rock. You can go up to where the water hen flows in. I'm not sure if they're open in the winter, but there's Harvest Lodge. Uh, I did some filming at Lake Manitoba Narrows. There's a lot of options and anywhere that I've fished, there are fish. It's basically just an access point. Like I said, these fish just kind of move about. So there's lots of accommodation options. You don't have to go far offshore. Like, yeah, we took these side by side today. There's a lot of spots that you can just walk out when you're going fishing. And there are nice fish kind of all over. Oh, that's an upgrade. Oh, we're putting that guy on the scale. Woo -hoo -hoo. Three, four, six. No. Stayed out into the dark. And that's a nice Lake Manitoba walleye. She's getting chilly there. Whew. Plenty in the lead with that fish, aren't you? Three, four, six. So that's going to call out a 1.96. So now I have a lot more than Keevan. Oh, there's a big mark by me. Oh, that's a big fish. Got him. Oh no, burbot. <laughs> I don't know. Might be a walleye upgrade. He's an upgrade locked to 202. Okay, 203 was an upgrade. There's another fish down there. Got him. We got a little flurry. No, we had a flurry of action. Oh no. 
All right, we're calling it. That was uh, good in my favor. I don't know what happened at Keevan's holes over there, but uh, two upgrades. Crazy how fast things can happen, but uh, I think the grouse is really gonna be the, the thing that determines who's the champion. We're gonna put in a solid effort tomorrow. I'm gonna flush a covey up. I'm not gonna put Jay, I, I put Jay first in the spots today and uh, that's not happening tomorrow. <laughs> Keevan's cutting me off tomorrow. Anyways, cool. Cool that we could fish two primetime bites today and go hunting. On the shortest day of the year. <laughs> On the shortest day of the year, exactly. All right, back on the hunting grind. Okay, so we're just running the inside and outside of this. Good luck, kind sir. Hopefully we get something going. Come on, Sharpie. Let's make this easy. Jeez! It's just a big thing to pop up. I was, I, I was, I heard the noise and I was ready to pop up and. Oh man. Oh, they're all in the bush too. All right, here's the deal. We were driving to our next spot and we just uh, saw a bunch of Sharpies going across the field, but. We're looking for permission, potentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We see, they're right there, they're like 200 yards away. We'll see what we can muster up. Yeah, they're nice and we saw exactly where they landed so they're not in the middle of the field which is huge so they land in the middle of the field there's just no chance of getting close but now we need to get permission keevan's texting people you got permission i'll let you shoot them they're off that point there on the yeah. other side like to me i feel like we try to use that thicker part of that bush as our cover and approach them that way they're gonna be on the point like they're right on the point i'll try to stay a little bit behind you so you can swing a little more Nice. Good job. And they moved a bit. Eh? Yeah. Good job. Sweet. That's going to put you in the lead for sure. We'll weigh that when we get back to the truck. It's a but... smaller one. That's the young of the year, I think. Yeah. All right. We're back at the vehicle. Let's see, Keevan. We've got ourselves a sharp tail gross. Smaller one, eh? Yeah. We've been uh, hunting around this whole area all day. It's been a tougher day for seeing them. And we're just heading out and we see a big group fly into a piece of land here. I know the landowner so I sent a message and he said yeah go if, go for it so we made a sneak and I don't know there must have been 15 or 20, oh, 20 of them we maybe should have got a couple more but we got one and that's hey, great it's a start okay scales ready locked at 199 yeah I we might have two, a new leader two, that's gonna actually be pretty tight I need to shoot any bird right now add boom new leader Keevan Erickson oh, all right, we're gonna keep going onto a new property. Uh, amazing, that was good. I was thinking for a while we might not get any, but sharp tail are just so much tougher. But roughies are part of this competition as well, so we might get on some roughies, but I think whoever notches their four slots is gonna be potentially the winner, but who knows, things happen fast just like that, but so good. I see you, bro. I see you, come on. Oh no! No! That was ridiculous. I can get permission in there. If on this one? Yeah. All right, here we go. Good vibes. I think we just have to hug tight and then kind of peek around that corner. And I don't know, I feel like if we go wide, they're just, their eyesight's ridiculous. Like think about how they spooked from the truck that far away. They're gonna be right here. Really? Yeah. The problem is if we walk that way and they flush with the wind, they're just gone down that way. Or do we just, Go straight at him. Run. Like, do we just run? You want to just do that? Are we going to kick ourselves? No, let's just run. Let's go. Oh, you're going fast. There they are. Where do you see them? Shoot. They went down. They went down. This side or the other side? Other side. I think a big group went over the tree line. You think they went over? But one dropped in on this side. Do you want to split? Ah, uh, sure. I'll go on this corner here. Oh. Oh, there they all went. Over the tree line out there. It's over, Jay. You get one? 
I got one. Really? Yeah, buddy. Woo! That looks a little bigger. Look at that. Another Sharpie for the team. By the team, I mean Team Keevan. Team Keevan. That might be a W, I don't know. Unless you got some shooting to do here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that is awesome. All right, well, your last, your last cross was? 199. 199, so we'll see if it's bigger. I, I think it's bigger. 217. That might be a nail in the coffin, Keevan. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, I mean. All right, this isn't looking good. I think it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good job, buddy. I got second place. That's a wrap. Keevan, good job. Thanks for trying. I, I need to be a better shot. I had shots of two grouse and I did have the bigger walleye. So I think if I would have connected better, whatever, all excuses. Sharpie hunting is a lot tougher than walleye fishing. At, at this point in time, <laughs> I mean, we had the walleye fishing was pretty darn easy. We had it easy. We drilled a couple holes compared to walking, you know, 15,000 steps. But that's why I like Sharpie hunting. It is challenging. It tests your shooting and we had to stay focused, but uh, amazing day. We will we'll continue this. I was hoping to get a trophy. Maybe we'll do this again next year and maybe it'll be our our biggest deer and three biggest perch. How does that sound? It sounds, it sounds like a great plan. All right, that'll be the next one. Anyways, guys, um, check out Lake Manitoba. Anywhere you can get access to the lake, you can probably walk out and catch fish. And uh, if you're looking for a new activity that gives you some exercise, try grouse hunting. Yeah, landowners are often more than willing to give permission and there's also Lots of crown land that's great for roughies and sharpies and the interlake's massive and there's lots of birds. A lot of fun. Congrats. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so sorry. Oh.